I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand, it is a Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour through this land, this pilgrim land. By thy saving power, hear my plea, my feeble plea. Lord, you, Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Led my wonder through the valley, dim toward the setting of the sun. Lead me safely to a land of rest, if I a crown of love have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom can be picked. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim left. By thy saving power, hear my plea, my feeble plea. Lord, dear Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Good morning. That's another wake you up one this morning, although not hardly as fast as yesterday's was. Um, we are continuing our journey through the scriptures, and we are picking up in. 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, hearing about Saul meeting Samuel. Kish was rich. Uh, Kish was a rich, influential man from the tribe of Benjamin. He was the son of Abiel and grandson of Zerah, from the family of Becherah and the clan of Aphia. His son Saul was the most handsome man in Israel head and shoulders taller than anyone else in the land. One day, Kish's donkey strayed away, and he told Saul, Take a servant with you and go look for them. So Saul took one of his servants and traveled all through the hill country of Ephraim, the land of Shalishash, and Shalem, the Shalem area, and the entire land of Benjamin. But they couldn't find the donkey anywhere. Finally, they entered the region of Zulf. And Saul said to his servant, Let's go home. By now my father will be more worried about us than about the donkeys. But the servant said, I've just thought of something. There's a man of God who lives here in this town. He is held in high honor by all the people because everything he says comes true. Let's go find him. Perhaps he can tell us which way to go. But we don't have anything to offer him, Saul replied. Even our food is gone and we don't have a thing to give him. Well, the servant said, I have one small piece of silver. We can at least offer it to him and see what happens. In those days, if people wanted a message from God, they would say, let's go and ask the seer, for prophets used to be called seers. All right, Saul agreed, let's try it. So they started into the town where the man of God was. As they were climbing a hill toward the town, they met some young women coming out to draw water. So Saul and his servant, servant asked, is the seer here today? Yes, they replied. Stay right on this road. He is at the town gates. He has just arrived to take part in the public sacrifice up on the hill. Hurry and catch him before he goes up to the hill to eat. The guest won't start until he arrives to bless the food. So they entered the town, and as they passed through the gates, Samuel was coming out toward them to climb the hill. Now the Lord had told Samuel the previous day, about this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. 
Anoint him to be the leader of my people Israel. He will rescue them from the Philistines. For I have looked down on my people in mercy and have heard their cry. When Samuel noticed Saul, the Lord said, That's the man I told you about. He will rule my people. Just then Saul approached Samuel at the gateway and asked, Can you please tell me where the seer's house is? I am the seer, Samuel replied. Go up on the hill ahead of me to the place of sacrifice and we'll eat there together. In the morning I will tell you what you want to know and send you on your way. And don't worry about those donkeys that were lost three days ago, for they have been found. And I am here to tell you that you and your family are the focus of all Israel's hopes. Saul replied, But I'm only from Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel, and my family is the least important of all the families of that tribe. Why are you talking like this to me? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the great hall and placed them at the head of the table, honoring them above the thirty special guests. Samuel then instructed the cook to bring Saul the finest cut of meat, the piece that had been set aside for the guest of honor. So the cook brought it in and placed it before Saul. Go ahead and eat it, Samuel said. I am saving it for you even before I was saving it for you even before I invited these others. So Saul ate with Samuel. After the feast, when they had returned to the town, Samuel took Saul up to the roof of the house and prepared a bed for him there. At daybreak the next morning, Samuel called up to Saul, Get up, it's time you were on your way. So Saul got up, and he and Samuel left the house together. When they reached the edge of town, Samuel told Saul to send his servant on ahead. After the servant was gone, Samuel said, Stay here, for I have received a special message for you from God. Samuel anoints Saul as king, 1 Samuel 10, beginning of verse 1. The period of the judges came to a close when Saul became king of Israel. Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. He kissed Saul on the cheek and said, I am doing this because the Lord has appointed you to be the leader of his people Israel. When you leave me today, you will see two men beside Rachel's tomb at Ziza, on the border of Benjamin. They will tell you that the donkeys have been found and that your father is worried about you and is asking, Have you seen my sons? When you get to the Oak of Tabor, you will see three men coming towards you who are on their way to worship God at Bethel. One will be bringing three young goats, another will have three loaves of bread, and the third will be carrying a skin of wine. They will greet you and offer you two of the loaves which you are to accept. When you arrive at Gibeah of God, where the garrison of the Philistines is located, you will meet a band of prophets coming down from the altar on the hill. They will be playing a harp, a tambourine, a flute, and a lyre, and they will be prophesying. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you with power, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed into a different person. After these signs take place, do whatever you think is best, for God will be with you. Then go down to Gilga ahead of me, and wait for me there seven days. I will join you there to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings when I arrive, and I will give you further instructions. Samuel's signs are fulfilled, beginning in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9. As Saul turned and started to leave, God changed his heart. And all Samuel's signs were fulfilled that day. When Saul and his servants arrived at Gibeah, they saw the prophets coming toward them. Then the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy. When his friends heard about it, they exclaimed, What? Is Saul a prophet? How did the son of Kish become a prophet? But one of the neighbors responded, It doesn't matter who his father is. Anyone can become a prophet. So that is the origin of the saying, Is Saul a prophet? When Saul had finished prophesying, he climbed the hill to the altar. Where in the world have you been? Saul's uncle asked him. We went to look for the donkeys, Saul replied, but we couldn't find them. So we went to the prophet Samuel to ask him where they were. Oh, and what did he say? His uncle asked. He said the donkeys had been found, Saul replied, but Saul didn't tell his uncle that Samuel had anointed him to be king. Saul is acclaimed king, beginning in 1 Samuel 10, verse 17. And this would have been about 
1050 BC. Later, Samuel called all the people of Israel to meet before the Lord at Mizpah, and he gave them this message from the Lord, the God of Israel. I brought you from Egypt and rescued you from the Egyptians and from all of the nations that were oppressing you. But though I have done so much for you, you have rejected me and said, We want a king instead. Now, therefore, present yourselves before the Lord by tribes and clans. So Samuel called the tribal leaders together before the Lord, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen. Then he brought each family of the tribe of Benjamin before the Lord, and the family of the Matrites was chosen. And finally Saul, son of Kish, was chosen from among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. So they asked the Lord, Where is he? And the Lord replied, He is hiding among the baggage. So they found him and brought him out, and he stood head and shoulders above anyone else. Then Samuel said to all the people, This is the man the Lord has chosen as your king. No one in all Israel is his equal. And all the people shouted, Long live the king! Then Samuel told the people what the rights and duties of a king were. He wrote them down on a scroll and placed it before the Lord. Then Samuel sent the people home again. When Saul returned to his home at Gibeah, a band of men whose hearts God had touched became his constant companions. But there were some wicked men who complained, How can this man save us? And they despised him and refused to bring him gifts. But Saul ignored them. Saul defeats the Ammonites, beginning in 1 Samuel 11, verse 1. About a month later, King Nahash of Ammon led his army against the Israelite city of Jabesh-Gilead. But the citizens of Jabesh asked for peace. Make a treaty with us and we will be your servants, they pleaded. All right, Nahash said, but only on one condition. I will gouge out the right eye of every one of you as a disgrace to all Israel. Give us seven days to send messengers throughout Israel, replied the leaders of Jabesh. If none of our relatives will come to save us, we will agree to your terms. When the messengers came to Gibeah, Saul's hometown, and told the people about their plight, everyone broke into tears. Saul was plowing in the field, and when he returned to town, he asked, What's the matter? Why is everyone crying? So they told him about the message from Jabesh. Then the Spirit of God came mightily upon Saul, and he became very angry. He took two oxen and cut them into pieces and sent the messengers, messengers to carry them throughout Israel with this message. This is what will happen to the oxen of anyone who refuses to follow Saul and Samuel into battle. And the Lord made the people afraid of Saul's anger, and all of them came out together as one. When Saul mobilized them at Bezek, he found there were 300,000 men of Israel in addition to the 30,000 from Judah. So Saul sent the messengers back to Jabesh Gilead to say, We will rescue you by noontime tomorrow. What joy there was throughout the city when that message arrived. The men of Jabesh then told their enemies, Tomorrow we will come out to you, and you can do to us as you wish. But before dawn the next morning, Saul had arrived, having divided his army into three detachments. He launched a surprise attack against the Ammonites and slaughtered them the whole morning. The remnant of their army was so badly scattered that no two of them were left together. Then the people exclaimed to Samuel, Now where are those men who said Saul shouldn't rule over us? Bring them here and we will kill them. But Saul replied, No one will be executed today, for the today the Lord has rescued Israel. Then Samuel said to the people, Come, let us all go to Gilgah and reaffirm Saul's kingship. So they went to Gilgah. And in a solemn ceremony before the Lord, they crowned him king. Then they offered peace offerings to the Lord, and Saul and all the Israelites were very happy. Samuel's Farewell Address, beginning in 1 Samuel 12, verse 1. Then Samuel addressed the people again. I have done as you have asked and given you a king. I have selected him ahead of my own sons, and I stand here, an old, gray-haired man. I have served as your leader since I was a boy. Now tell me as I stand before the Lord and before his anointed one, whose ox or donkey have I stolen? Have I ever cheated any of you? Have I ever oppressed you? Have I ever taken a bribe? Tell me and I will make right whatever I have done wrong.
No, they replied, you've never cheated or oppressed us in any way, and you've never taken even a single bribe. The Lord and his anointed one are my witnesses, Samuel declared, that you can never accuse me of robbing you. Yes, it is true, they replied. It was the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, Samuel continued. He brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt. Now stand here quietly before the Lord as I remind you of all the great things the Lord has done for you and your ancestors. When the Israelites were in Egypt, they cried out to the Lord. He sent Moses and Aaron to rescue them from Egypt and to bring them into this land. But the people soon forgot about the Lord their God. So he let them be conquered by Sisera, the general of Hazor's army, and by the Philistines and the king of Moab. Then they cried to the Lord again and confessed, We have sinned by turning away from the Lord and worshiping the images of Baal and Ashtoreth. But we will worship you and you alone if you will rescue us from our enemies. Then the Lord sent Gideon, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel to save you, and you lived in safety. But when you were afraid of Nahash, the king of Ammon, you came to me and said that you wanted a king to reign over you, even though the Lord your God was already your king. All right, here's the king you have chosen. Look him over. You ask for him, and the Lord has granted your request. Now if you will fear and worship the Lord and listen to his voice, and if you do not rebel against the Lord's commands, and if you and your king follow the Lord your God, then all will be well. But if you rebel against the Lord's commands and refuse to listen to him, then his hand will be as heavy upon you as it was upon your ancestors. Now stand here and see the great thing the Lord is about to do. You know that it does not rain at this time of year during the wheat harvest. I will ask the Lord to send thunder and rain today. Then you will realize how wicked you have been in asking the Lord for a king. So Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain, and all the people were terrified of the Lord and of Samuel. Pray to the Lord your God for us, or we will die, they cried out to Samuel. For now we have added to our sins by asking for a king. Don't be afraid, Samuel reassured them. You have certainly done wrong, but make sure now that you worship the Lord with all your heart and that you don't turn your back on him in any way. Don't go back to worshiping worthless idols that cannot help or rescue you. They really are useless. The Lord will not abandon his chosen people, for that would dishonor his great name. He made you for a special nation to himself. As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you, and I will continue to teach you what is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and sincerely worship him. Think of all the wonderful things he has done for you. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be destroyed. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I right, dry mouth this morning. Give me just a second. And then we'll sing our closing hymn. <coughs> Excuse me. Boy, what a beautiful, beautiful morning. I love seeing the green on the trees coming out <laughs> here's a song that's very very precious to my family um y'all know my dad was a preacher and he was very insecure about his singing ability i'm sorry um evidently my cats unplugged the thing somewhere but anyway let me finish telling you the story so my dad was very insecure about his singing and when my brothers were young and we were at a very small congregation in williston south carolina um my dad started letting the boys lead singing on sunday night because he was the only man there and that's an exhausting service to do every word of service from start to finish and um Anyway, my my brothers were like four and six at the time when they first started leading singing. We used to play church all the time, of course, preach as kids. Um, and so Troy couldn't read yet, but he loved this hymn, Kneel at the Cross. And he, we had, uh, the little church had been given some songbooks from some other bigger churches. So they had some old red songbooks and some newer yellow songbooks. And so Troy would get up there every week and say, number 49 in the wed book, <laughs> Neil at the Cross. So uh, 
I assure you nobody in my family needs these words, uh, but I will show them to you for your benefit and hope you can take a deep breath and sing along with me. Kneel at the cross, Christ will meet you there. He intercedes for you. Lift up your voice, leave with him your care, and begin life anew. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. Kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross, His room for all, who would His glory share? Bliss there awaits, harm can never befall, those who are anchored there. Kneel at the cross, lead every care. Kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there. Kneel at the cross, Give your idols up, look unto realms above. Turn not again to life's sparkling cup, trust always in his love. Kneel at the cross, leave every care. the cross, Jesus will meet you there. Oh, beautiful, beautiful morning, but chilly wind out here. Good morning, Mary Nell. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Pam. Uh, good morning, Jim and Peggy. Good morning, Shirley. Good morning, Patty. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Hope you can come and join us at 11 for worship. We are back to in-person worship, so if you're local, Miller's Chapel's right across from McDonald's in Maynardville. If you're not local, we still will be, or, or for whatever reason, can't come in person, um, we will still be live streaming worship at 11, and we will be doing communion today too. So look forward to seeing you in worship whichever way you can attend. Y'all have a blessed, beautiful Sunday. See you at 11.